Hi everyone, my name is Fran O, oh, and I'm a pre-sales supply chain specialist at SAP. I've been asked by your president and intern at SAP to give you sort of the answers to some of the questions you might have regarding what my role entails and what it's like to work at SAP. So a lot of you might already know what SAP is because you're starting business information systems. But for those who don't know, uh, SAP is basically the largest uh, enterprise business software company in the world. And we've been around for about 47 years, starting in Germany. Now, what is my role as pre-sales? So what we basically do as pre-sales is we support our sales team from the technical point of view for our products. So what does that actually mean? Well, if you think about enterprise software, it's usually very, very expensive and usually takes a while to justify the business case as well as implement. So we need a large sales team to support the sales cycle in getting the software out to the customer. Now, a lot of our sales guys, they don't have the time to get into the weeds and the details on the specificities and the technicalities of our product. So they rely on us as pre-sales to demonstrate that side of the software to the customer. So typically what would happen is a customer would submit what they call an RFP, which is basically a document of requirements that they have for software. And then basically we will answer that. Part of my role is to answer whether or not we can meet that requirement. And if the customer likes our response, they'll invite us to do a software demonstration in front of the customer. So the role really requires a lot of presentation skills. And so what we will do is we'll go to the customer, we'll demonstrate them the software, we'll show them what it looks like, how it feels, and how it will eventually work for their company. And then we'll do Q&A after that. So essentially, we need to know how the product works, technically speaking, but we also need to know how to speak the business language of the customer. So the way you know if you enjoy pre-sales is if you like being in that nice little intermediary area between business and software, right? If you like to communicate with both stakeholders and you know how to float in between the technical side and the business side, you'll be a good fit for the role. As well as that, you also need to enjoy the limelight a little bit. You need to be able to present in front of large audiences and uh, be confident to do that for an extended period of time. So the way our role, um, our teams are split up in my department of pre-sales is that we have different teams for different products. So let's say, for example, we have an, a product called Ariba, which is the largest business to business network in the world. So we have an entire pre-sales team dedicated to that as well. I'm part of the S4 HANA team, which is basically our core ERP team. And so S4 HANA is basically our flagship product. And I'm part of that team specializing in a niche area called digital supply chain because the ERP covers everything from finance to HR to digital supply chain, for example. Well, what differentiates SAP from other companies is that we are basically the company that started this whole thing about business software, right? If you want to know the history, so basically we had a few cloud engineers at IBM and they had this idea of creating business software and basically IBM laughed them out of the room and said that this trend of business software is never going to happen. And so these guys left IBM and created SAP and we're the large company as you know today. So what differentiates us is that we're, we're the origin of where all this business software, all this information system knowledge comes from. And we've been doing it for 47 years. And so if you join SAP, what you'll do, what you'll get from a sales point of view is a competitive advantage uh, against your competitors and saying that we've had the history, but also we have the ability to cover a lot of different lines of businesses, which are, for example, HR, finance, supply chain, so on and so forth. Whereas some of our other competitors can only really talk about a specific area like customer experience, for example. So there are two different programs that really stick to my mind. The first one is the sales academy and the second is the pre-sales academy. Now, understanding that most of you are studying business information systems, I would assume that you would all appreciate 
the pre-sales academy side of things because that's more on the technical side. So I'll start talking about the pre-sales academy. So basically what the pre-sales academy is, is SAP's way of introducing uh, new graduates to the big world of SAP and training them in those presentation skills and those technical skills I talked about. So what will happen is you'll spend one month in Sydney onboarding, doing all your admin stuff, getting introduced to your managers and so forth. And after that one month, they'll basically fly you to California where it looks like I'm at in San Francisco. And they'll train you in the heart of Silicon Valley about the different uh, you know, technicalities of your software specialization, as well as how to present very well. Um, and so you'll spend about five months there and it's awesome because it's all expenses paid. So as a student, you know, that's always a perk. Um, flights, accommodation, food, whatever, it's all covered. Um, but what's more important there is also the experience. So, you're, you know, it's very rare to find the, a training program that trains you in back-to-back -back, uh, presentation skills, right? You know, in uni, you'll have sporadic, spread out presentation tests and skills. And that doesn't really hammer the, you know, the, the craft in but the pre-sales academy does that very well. It's also the, really the only place where you can learn core SAP business functions and skills. And if you do decide to leave SAP one day, you can always find a job in that ecosystem with that knowledge, right? Um, another great thing about the pre-sales academy is that, you know, it's very rare, again, to have a program where you're, you're immersed in a training experience for five months with people from all different cultures and different continents of the world. And to put that in perspective, in my intake, I had about 30 different countries represented in my wave. So I really got to experience for an extended period of time what different cultures are like and what it's like working with different teams and different culture dynamics. So what's the structure of the application process we have here? So obviously this all sounds great, but how do we get in, right? What's the way of getting into the program? So basically you have to think of the pre-sales academy program. I mean, the interview, like a, a group case interview, sort of, sort of like maybe a consulting McKinsey like interview, but it's put in a group context, right? And the reason why they do that is basically they want to see whether or not you're able to lead the team. That's the main archetype I've seen them look for. So can you lead the team? And can you do that in a manner that facilitates getting everyone's opinions into account, right? So how do you prepare for this? The first thing you should do is, is you, you should always know yourself and you should know SAP, right? So the first thing I would do is I would memorize what you submitted as your CV so you know what your strengths are. And then I would spend a lot of time memorizing what is SAP's strengths. So what are the, what's their history? What makes SAP unique from its competitors? Some of the things I just talked about earlier. And I would get immersed in the product itself. So learn about Esfahana, Leonardo, some of these products that you'll see on the website. And then once you have understood the product, I would then go into creating sort of one-liners or how think about how can you creatively present these products to the customer, right? Because what's going to happen at the end of the boot camp is that they're going to give you a case and they're going to say, Hey, here are three different products that you could potentially pitch to the customer. And they want you to see how you think through the process of um, justifying which product is necessary for the customer. So that's one thing they're going to look at, how you think out loud. Um, I think I would suggest things like SWOT analysis charts to display that. Um, but at the very end, what they're going to do is they're going to make you present as a group to a fake customer, which is your judges, your, your actual managers that are interviewing you. And you're going to present in front of them why you should choose that software. And what they're really looking for here is whether or not you can do it creatively, compellingly, but also back that up with technical and raw knowledge, right? If you're able to do these three things at the very end of the presentation and wow them, um, then they'll have the confidence to say that, hey, actually, if we invest in this person and they do that in front of a real customer, it will be compelling enough to push the customer to choose SAP 
over its competitors, right? Okay, once you get offered a spot, um, basically it's the standard process. You will get you know, your offer letter and if you accept it, as I said, you'll do your one, board, your one month onboarding process. You'll go to California for five months and then you'll come back and you'll finish the rest of your five months or six months of the academy program back in your market unit. And the academy is still supporting you when you come back to see whether or not you're coping well in your actual market unit and whether or not you're implementing everything they taught you. So the caveat to all of this great sounding uh, stuff about the program is that when you apply for the pre-sales academy, the truth is uh, you won't have as much flexibility as you think in terms of the teams you choose. What do I mean by that, right? So what you'll do is you'll get basically put into a, the, the pre-sales department, which is we call the digital transformation office. And from there, they'll look at your job history or your study experience and they'll see what's your, what's your background and then they'll make a decision whether to put you in certain, a certain team or not. Um, I'll give you an example for me. So when I interviewed, I had a background in accounting and business information systems. And essentially, I didn't have any background in supply chain. However, they needed someone to jump into the supply chain space um, as well. So basically, I did get a choice between two different teams in that situation, right? Whether to go down the finance path, because that was my background, or whether to go down supply chain to fulfill the business need. I went down there because I wanted something more novel and new. Um, and then, yeah, so there are other teams. The other teams, for example, that you can be potentially placed in is, for example, our general business team. So the, that's a team that deals with customers that, are small to medium size, which is a good place to start. Um, there's the S4 HANA team, which is my team, which is typically the larger companies because it is quite uh, expensive and large software to implement because it's the core ERP. There's also other more functional uh, teams that you can join like Ariba, which is that procurement network I talked about, Conquer Travel and Expense Management, or Success Factors for HR, right? So what's great about pre-sales is that even though you might not get in the team you specifically want to, to start with, if you develop that pre-sales skill, uh, you'll be able to cross transfer to different teams uh, by simply just learning the product. That's all you have to do to transfer teams is that you just really need to learn what the product is from a technical point of view. What's transferable is that presentation skill we talked about and that ability to talk to business and technical stakeholders. That sort of segues to my next point of well, what's the what's the purpose in joining pre-sales as a, as a graduate role? What kind of roles would that translate to, right? And if you think about what you're developing in pre-sales, as I talked about, presentation skills is very very rare and key, right? As we know, it's probably like the third biggest fear or something like that in the world. And if you're able to develop that presentation skills and that ability to speak to business stakeholders, technical stakeholders, and answer questions in high stakes, high pressure environments, that's really gonna train you for almost any kind of role you think about. You could go down a technical side because you have that technical knowledge. You could go down a business management side, right? Because you know how to uh, sometimes lead in teams as pre-sales, but also you know how to do presentations and talk to very high level executives when the stakes are high, which are all skills needed for a management role in tech. Um, so you can even go down a business architect side. So if you like thinking about things from a technical point of view, but holistically, you can go down the solutions architect or industry business architects role, which a lot of people at pre-sales at SAP go into as well. So I actually initially applied for the sales academy role because I didn't know about pre-sales and I got rejected. I made like top three, but I didn't make top two, which was what they were looking for. Um, and essentially I really took that to heart and I went back to the, to the back room and prepared for my second interview, which is the pre-sales academy quite a lot. So I spent a whole month, and back-to-back -back weekends preparing for it. So what I did was, as I said, I studied um, 
very obsessively about the product SAP had to offer and their go-to-market strategies, which is, for example, the intelligent enterprise is one of them. So I really obsessed over how to creatively pitch products in a very technical way, right? That was what I obsessed over. And then I, what I did was I created almost like a dry run script. A dry run is basically a practice presentation, so to speak. And so what I did was I grabbed my best friends and I said, hey guys, can you pretend to be the customer? And um, I'm gonna do a presentation on this software for you. And can you ask me um, some example questions I prepared for you to ask me? And then that was some of the ways I practiced for it. And so when I got to the interview day, I knew exactly um, how I want to present certain products that I knew would probably come through. And I also thought about what my strengths were and what as a leader and how I would position myself in the team, right? So I went even to the point of saying, if I had this type of person, how would I approach this person in my team? If I had another type of person, how would I address them and get them to follow my vision and, and my lead, right? So this is some of the things you need to talk think about, not just the product, but also the team dynamics and how you're gonna slot yourself in the team. So that, that about wraps up my uh, question and answers. Um, if you have any more specific questions about the process about pre sales Academy, please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn um, or send me an email at fremont.o.sap.com. Um, I'm happy to answer any specific questions you all have. And uh, thanks for watching my Q&A video.